any number I give you. If it's a perfect square, it's pretty easy. It's just like four. If it's not a perfect square, right now all we have is a calculator method. Now I'm going to teach you a method in, in a little while, a couple sections from here, where we can simplify these numbers uh, to get something that's still radical, but we can make that in the radican smaller by simplifying very similar to this idea. Okay, very similar to that. You also should be able to simplify any variable that I give you in there now. X to the 10th, X to the 6th, X to the 8th. Right now we haven't done any odd power yet, but we'll get to that. This is the method that we, we would use for that. That's why I kind of preview that information. But we should be feeling pretty good about these square roots. However, there are other roots besides square roots, and we're going to talk about those for a while today. Specifically, we're going to talk about cube roots, and then move on from there. First, let me tell you what a cube root even looks like. All your roots are going to have a radical. That's that, that shape like this. That's that shape like that. Every root you ever see is going to have that. However, there's a little space for a number right here in the, the index portion of our, our root where a number should go. Now, typically, we have a square root. We don't write the number. But you need to know that what's implied here is that when we have a square root, there really is a little number here. It's a 2. We just don't write the 2. That 2 says we have a square root. And it says what we're going to do is every time we see a square, the inverse operation lets us simplify that. So a square root and a square inverse. That little 2, we never write it. We never, we never see it. It's just implied like, you know how x is actually 1x? Do you ever write the 1? No. x to the first power is x to the first like that, but we never write the 1. We never write the 2 here either, it's just implied that you know that. Oh, does that make sense? Yeah. So that is, that right there is a square root, because I don't have a number right there. It's implied that that's a 2. If I want to show a different type of root, I just have to put a different number there. So if I put a third, a third root, or a cube root, same thing, what does that mean? Let's say the cube root of, I want you to think of it. Don't say it out loud, just think of it. Think of what a third root would mean. A square root means a number times itself gives you the radicand. What is our radicand here? No, what is our radicand? Eight. eight. The number inside the radical is called the radicand. The, the radicand here is eight, for sure. What we're asking now is instead of a number times itself that's giving you 16, we're asking for a number times itself times itself. Okay, so that's three, three times. So a number times itself twice, or a number times itself times itself. What number would give you eight? Two. Yeah, because two times two is? Four. Times another two is? That's what we're asking. What number times itself three times will give you the radicand if you have a cube root? So in our case, yeah, that's equal to two. That's what the cube root means. Let's try a few more. Cube root of 27, just think about it. Just think about it. Don't say it out loud, I want you to think on these things. <clears throat> cube root of 27 means, it's not a square root, right? Hey, by the way, can you even take a square root of 27? Well, you can on a calculator. It's not a whole number, though. Can you take a square root of 8 and get a whole number? Not a square root. Cube roots are different. Right? Cube roots ask one more multiplication in there. So what number times itself three times will give you 27? Three. Yeah. Do you think there are more square roots that you can take a, take a square root and get a whole number between 1 and 100? Or more cube roots you can take a cube root of and get a whole number between 1 and 100? Look at this. If I, um, the first square root I can take, a, take and get a whole number is 4, right? I can take a square root of this number and that number and that number. You're thinking in your head 2, 3, 4, 5, aren't you? The first number I can take a cube root of besides 1 is 8. The next number, can you take a cube root of 9? Cube root of, a square root, yes. Cube root? How about 10? 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, no. The next one is, look at that. The next one is 27. That's the next number I can, because look at that's two, that's three, right? There's no whole number between two and three. So if I can take a cube root of eight, it gives me two. Cube root of 27 gives me three. There's nothing between there I can take a cube root of and it will give me a whole number. And I don't know if that makes sense to you. So there are going to be less perfect cubes between one and 100 than there are perfect squares. There's going to be less perfect fourths to the fourth power than there are perfect cubes or perfect squares. Let's do one more. Let's do the cube root of negative 64. Cube root of negative 64. Let's think about that. Again, I don't want you to answer out loud on these ones. I want everyone to think on this. Cube root of negative 64. But this asks us, what number times itself three times gives you negative 64? And we go, oh, there's a negative inside. No solution, right? No real solution. One of them is a negative. One of the numbers is a negative. It has to be the same number. Oh, they're all negative. 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 Oh, yeah, positive. 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 Say that one more time. Negative times negative is positive. Positive uh -huh. times negative is negative. So can we have a negative inside of a cube root? Yes. yes. Yeah, it's different than a square root. Right? A square root says a number times itself. A cube root says a number times itself times itself. Is a negative times a negative times a negative equal to a negative? Yeah. Then these are possible. There's nothing you can't take a cube root of. It's different than a square root. So are negatives possible inside of a cube root? Absolutely. What is this, this value? What times itself three times gives you negative 64? Negative 4. Negative 4. Yeah, it's not positive 4. It's negative 4. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> that was an interesting one. I liked it. All right. <laughs> Back to math. So it's negative 4 because if you think about it, what's negative 4 times negative 4? 16. Positive 16 times negative 4 again. Negative that's where we're getting that from. So that is possible. Is this possible? Cube root of y to the third power. Cube root of y to the third power. I want you to compare this to what we did over here. What we did over here is every time we saw, please watch up here for a second, every time we saw a square root of x squared, we understood that the square root and the square, those things are eliminating each other because they're inverse operations. And we go, oh, yeah, yeah, square root and square, that equals x. Why did that work? Look at the board here real quick. Remember, there's supposed to be a little 2 here. If we match up the power with the root, say that again, if we match up the power with the root, no matter what it is, if we match up those numbers, they are inverse operations. So a square undoes a square root, and a square root undoes a square. A cube undoes a cube root, and a cube root undoes a cube. So what is the answer on this? Why? Exactly. We've matched up the power and the root, right? Those are inverse operations. We're going to get y. So just like we can simplify squares inside square roots, we can simplify cubes inside cube roots. That's kind of cool. And that works for every root we're going to find out in just a little while. Let's try some more. We'll go through a few of these things, and then I'll have you do a couple on your own. We'll talk about nth roots, and that should be about it. We might get to a little bit of graphing. Cube root of zero? Zero. Yeah, zero times zero times zero, that gives you zero. How about the cube root of negative, how many I can pick from? See if you're really good at this. Just think of this. Negative 1,000. Don't say it out loud. <laughs> Get rid of negative 1,000. What times what times what itself gives you 1,000, or in this case, negative 1,000? Negative 10. Negative 10. Very good. Notice how we're, we're a cube root of negative 1,000 is only up to negative 10 at this point. That's, that's kind of cool. Can you do fractions? Yeah. Cube root of 1 over 64, that means we're taking the cube root of the numerator and the cube root of the denominator. What's the cube root of the numerator? 1. Cube root of the denominator? 
Cool. So this is actually equal to one fourth. Interesting, right? It looks pretty, a lot bigger than that. It really is. Cube root of x to the ninth. We're going to do the same basic idea that we did for our square roots. Only this time, instead of writing this as something to the second power, I'm going to write this as something to what power, folks? I'm going to try to match up the power with the root. So again, there's two options. I'm going to show you both options until we get down to the section where this is applicable. One way you do this is write this as x to some power. Don't forget that little 3 there, by the way. You cannot forget that. Otherwise, it changes the cube root into a square root, and we can't have that happen. We're going to want to write this as some x to some power to the third. The reason why we're choosing third, we're trying to match up the power with the root because we know those are inverse operations. What needs to go in there in order to keep that as x to the ninth power? Good, because three to the third power, we multiply those. In your head, is it still okay that that is x to the ninth? Don't you have to be okay with that? That's still x to the ninth. We multiply that. Look at power root. Just like with the squares, that simplifies. The other way you could do this, check this out. You could have a cube root. x to the ninth is the same thing as, now I'm not, I'm not going to write this as x squared times x squared times x squared. Notice if I did that, x squared times x squared times x squared. Does a square cancel with a cube root? No, a cube cancels with a cube root. I'm going to write this as as many powers of x to the three as I can. x to the third, x to the third, that's x to the, let's see, 3, 6, here's 9. That's still x to the ninth. It's still x to the ninth. Yes, no? Okay. Every time you see a cube root and a third power, those things are inverse operations. Again, because I can split those roots up, I could write this as the cube root of x to the third times the cube root of x to the third times the cube root of x to the third. Every one of those matches up, just like just like that example right there. And we would get, in either case, x to the third. So again, there's two ways we can do that. Are you okay with that one? So cube root of negative 64 x to the 6, even though it's negative, it's a cube root. So we can take the cube root of that. Let's show both ways here again. First way you'd write this, can you take the cube root of negative 64? Yeah. Sure. So we're going to leave that alone for now. Negative 64. However, I do need to write this variable as something different. Give me the first option in writing that variable. How can I write x to the 6 so that I can simplify it with a cube root? x squared times cube squared. x squared first or x cube? x squared. If you have two options, right? One of them is for a square root and one of them is for a cube root. You're either going to write this as x to the second to the third or x to the third to the second. Which one's going to work here? x to the second to the third. Perfect. x to the second to the third. Why? Because we're trying to match up the cube with a cube root. That's what we're doing. Notice how this power has to match that in order to simplify. Cube root of negative 64, we already know that's negative 4. Cube root of x squared to the third, that third and the cube root, those simplify out, we get x squared. The other way that you could do this, negative 64, and you could write this instead as x to the third times x to the third. Do you see that those x to the thirds are going to simplify? Yep. Which way do you like better, the first way or the second way? Which do you think? Mm 